How's everybody doing today? I want to thank everybody for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Corbin Delaney, and I'm the marketing manager here at Life Data. I'm here with our presenter, Mike Barker. If you don't know Mike, Mike travels across the US, Canada, and Europe on behalf of Life Data. He educates on the importance of equine nutrition and hoof care. Uh, today, Mike is going to be discussing uh, some of the factors that directly affect the hoof and coat quality of your horse. Um, as he goes on, I know that uh, some of you may end up having questions or already have questions. Um, and if you look on the, it's probably on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see a little go to webinar menu um, that can drop down and you there's a little spot for you to enter in your questions. Um, you can enter in those at any time. Uh, feel free uh, to, to put those questions in as they come up. Uh, but once when Mike gets done with the presentation, uh, that's when we'll take some time to answer some of those questions. Uh, so if you enter, enter in a question and we don't answer it right away, do not worry. Um, I promise that we will get to it and we will answer your question. I'm going to hand it over to Mike now and let him uh, begin the presentation. Uh, and again, I just want to thank everybody for attending. Thank you very much, Corbin, and thank you for joining us during our webinar <clears throat> here at Life Data Labs. And we certainly hope that you're staying health and safe uh, that you're staying safe and healthy and that you continue to do this during this uh, pandemic that's essentially affecting the entire world. And what we'd like to do <clears throat> during our presentation is to point out a few factors uh, that's going to affect hoof and coat quality. And of course, I realize that we are coming out of the winter months in a lot of parts of the U.S., and at this point in time, the old winter coat is being shed and it's being replaced with this new spring coat. And we'll talk about that to some to some extent. We'll also talk about some of the factors that's going to work directly upon the foot of the horse as well. When we when we talk about the foot of the horse and we talk about hair coat. That's one part of a bigger picture that we need to talk about, and that's dermal tissue itself. And dermal tissue is uh, one <clears throat> is, is simply consists of the skin, uh, the foot of the horse, uh, also involved within the skin of the, itself is going to be your hair follicles, your sweat glands, oil glands. <clears throat> and even one part of the joint itself is dermal tissue. Dermal tissue is the largest organ, glandular structure in the horse. We need to be realize that it's a voracious consumer of nutrients. Uh, these nutrients have to be replenished on a daily basis. And we also need to understand that all dermal tissue, they all have a common nutrient need. So when we're providing the needed nutrients to a horse, we can't single those out specifically for the foot. In other words, it's going to improve the health and quality of all the dermal tissue. And when we talk about the function of dermal tissue, if we consider the skin and hair coat first, uh, the first thing that it does, it, it provides protection from the environment. Uh, it helps to shed water, number one. Uh, it helps to protect the uh, horse from microorganisms, number two. Uh, it becomes a barrier to insects. Uh, the hair coat itself is an excellent indicator of the health of the horse. And then the other thing that the skin and hair coat has the ability to do is it helps to regulate the body temperature as well. Now, when we take a look at the hoof, the foot of the horse, uh, basically it separates the horse from the environmental conditions that wants to work against dermal tissue itself. In other words, the excessive moisture, the lack of moisture, uh, bacteria and fungi are going to work upon uh, dermal tissue and that foot separates this germ-laden environment from the horse. Uh, the foot quickly shows any changes in nutrition 
or a problem that's going on from an environmental situation as well. And it is a great indicator as well as to the well-being, the nutritional wellness of the horse. And bottom line, if we have no hoof, we, we essentially have no horse. Let's take a look at some of the factors that's going to work upon dermal tissue quality. We'll take a look at genetics, the age of the horse, the health of the horse. We'll spend quite a bit of time on nutrition. We'll talk about the environment and some of the factors that are involved from an environmental standpoint. And then we'll spend a few minutes on mechanics and the farrier work. Of course, the first two on our list, uh, genetics and age of the horse, are things that we have no control over to begin with. And when we take a look at genetics after we have purchased the horse, and there's literally nothing that we can do to alter that. And, and a lot of times when we're looking at purchasing a horse, we're more concerned about how well that horse performs in whatever discipline that might be, whether that's a race horse, whether that's the movement of the horse, the gait of the horse, uh, the jumping ability of the horse, or just simply how good the horse looks. We often fail to look at the foot of the horse and often fail to consider dermal tissue quality when we purchase our horse. The other point that we have no control over as well, but I just wanted to include this as one of the factors, and that's actually the age of the horse. And we have this chart that was actually uh, pulled out of Principles of Horseshoeing that was written by Dr. Doug Butler. And we have three groups of horses that you can see here. Of course, at the top of the chart here, we have our foals. And if we take a look at hoof growth in inch, inches per month, foals typically grow a little over a half of an inch on a monthly basis. As that foal becomes a yearling, we're looking at about a half of an inch per month in hoof growth. And as we reach maturity, about a third of an inch per month. And then our aged horse, we're only looking at about a quarter of an inch of hoof growth per month. So age is a factor in the amount of growth uh, that we're going to see in the horse as well. And also, as this horse matures and ages, sometimes not only do we slow down in hoof growth, but we also slow down in the quality of the growth that's actually being grown. So what can we actually do? Uh, we can take a look at the health of the horse. And one of the things that I'd like to point out that is creating a tremendous problem, uh, not only in the U.S., but around the world, and that's all these horses that are obese, that are overweight. And as we take a look at this chart here in 1990, the National Animal Health Monitoring System estimated that only 5% of the horse population was overweight at that point in time. In recent studies uh, out of the state of Virginia, they estimated that 51% of their horse population was overweight. North Carolina has done a study where their conclusion was that 48% were overweight. And on an international basis, the Scots even done a study and their conclusion was that almost half of their horses were overweight as well. Now this has a direct effect upon dermal tissue, upon the foot of the horse specifically, causing health issues. Uh, and we might ask ourselves, what has made the change from 1990 up until today. Uh, we might ask the question, is it simply a lack of owner education about equine nutrition? Are we feeding too many concentrates? Are we over or under supplementing our horses as far as certain nutrients that that horse needs? Is it because of improved forage varieties 
And the thing about the improved forage varieties is that they're primarily intended for cattle use, beef production, and not for horse use. We have fertilized forages that are uh, providing us with an abundance of forage and hay that we're providing that horse. Or is it a lack of uh, exercise? Well, my conclusion is that all of these that we have listed are contributing to this obesity problem around the world. One thing that will help us to communicate from one individual to another, or from your standpoint to your vet or your farrier about how nutritionally fit your horse is, is that if we take a look at this uh, body condition score, which was developed by uh, Dr. Henneke out of Texas A&M, it gives us a way of communicating how much fat or, or how thin a horse might be. And, and this scale runs from one to nine, and we do this visually, and we can also do this through palpitation, and there are certain areas that we will take a look at to make this assessment here as to where our horse will, will score out as far as the body condition score, or BCS. And we're going to take a look at the neck, the weathers, uh, down the back, the tail head, the ribs, and behind the shoulder, and we'll make an assessment there. Of course, a number one is essentially a very poor, nutritionally starved horse. And then when we get down to the uh, opposite end, number nine is an extremely fat horse. Uh, an example, this is a uh, body condition score of a number two. The horse is very thin. The horse is nutritionally starved. And then when we go to the other end of the spectrum, we're looking at a number nine, which is a severely obese horse, uh, which is a likely candidate for a host of different health issues. Uh, and, and we might ask the question, how do we control, how do we con change the body condition score, especially in these obese horses? Well, we might take a look at exercise, if the horse is physically able to do that. Uh, one of the things that we can easily do is we can go back to the basic diet of the horse, which has always been grass. And then we also need to come up with a feeding program that would allow us to separate calories from the nutrients that a horse needs on a daily basis. Now this obese horse needs the nutrition, yes it doesn't need the calories that it's going to receive if we're feeding a complete feed, a compounded feed, or a sweet feed. And one of the solutions that Life Data Labs has to offer is going to be a forage balancer or a hay balancer, which allows you to separate calories from nutrients. And basically we go back to whatever grass the horse can safely consume and whatever hay the horse can safely consume and we're going to add this balance uh, this forage balancer called barn bag at a half a cup per day to a thousand pound horse and that becomes our feeding program for this obese horse now the extremely thin horse that we looked at earlier we can use the same feeding program on that horse, but we're going to add a third aspect to that feeding program, and we're going to add calories in the form of grain, whether that's whole low, sugar beet pulp, to increase that body condition score in that extremely thin horse. And we will do that uh, very slowly uh, and actually build the horse back up to that body condition score of at least a five or a six. Some other health issues that we will just point out that is going to work on dermal tissue, the foot, hair coat, uh, laminitis, uh, insulin resistant, uh, are you metabolic courses? We can have an illness or an extreme fever that's going to work on the foot of the horse and even the hair coat itself. We can have an injury to the coronary band, which is going to affect hoof growth as well. 
Uh, we can have an injury to one foot where the horse wants to offload its weight onto the opposite foot, creating a problem. Cushing's is another problem, uh, and Cushing's is going to directly affect the hair code of the horse. And a thyroid problem uh, is another health issue that we need to be concerned about as well, especially if we have poor, dem poor, poor uh, dermal tissue growth. Now let's talk about nutrition. And nutrition plays a tremendous role in dermal tissue growth and the quality of that growth. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, dermal tissue is the largest glandular organ in the horse that needs huge amounts of nutrients on a daily basis. And we have to supply those on a daily basis to have good dermal tissue to provide this nice hair coat, skin quality, and hoof quality that we would like to see in our horses. And as we look at these three horses here, we see this shiny appearance, this glowing appearance. We see these nice manes. Uh, and, and that's just a direct uh, indicator of what's going on internally in the horse. It's a mirror image. That outside is a mirror image of the internal nutritional factors that are going on inside of, of these horses. What we're striving for <clears throat> when we talk about nutrition is a balanced diet. And sometimes it's easier to talk about an unbalanced diet or an inadequate diet to get our point across. And any inadequate diet is number one, it, we're either going to have deficiencies or we're going to have excesses. And these deficiencies or excesses are going to be found in either the protein that we're providing the horse, the energy or calories that we're providing that horse, vitamins, amino acids, or minerals. And if we have a deficiency or an excess in any of these areas here, then we have an unbalanced diet, we have an inadequate diet, and that's going to directly affect dermal tissue. Any inadequate diet, we're going to end up with these uh, problems within the horse itself. We're going to end up with a dull, a dull brittle, patchy hair coat, which we visually see. A lot of times we have very poor muscle tone. Uh, some of the horses that are trying to work have no energy. And then we take a look at the foot of the horse. We have little or slow growth. A lot of times we will have thin hoof walls, which end up in splitting, cracking. And of course, anytime we have thin hoof walls, a lot of times that horse will not maintain or retain a shoe between resets. And that unhealthy foot becomes prone to other secondary issues, such as thrush, white line, abscessing. And, and what causes this poor dermal tissue growth and quality? Nutritionally, it either comes about from a deficiency, it comes about from over supplementation, it comes about from either a toxicity problem or a nutrient balance issue. Either of these four will create this inadequate bump, a diet which directly affects hair coat, skin, and the foot of the horse. We know that there are certain mineral vitamins, uh, amino acids, fatty acids, that's going to aid the horse in growing good dermal tissue. And Dr. Gravely, many, many years ago, took the time through his extensive research to identify these certain nutrients that number one were deficient in horses that had poor dermal tissue growth. The question is, after these specific nutrients were identified, how much of those nutrients does the horse need on a daily basis? 
Dr. Gravely also made that determination in his research many years ago as well. And then we also need to ask ourselves, do certain minerals, vitamins, and even amino acids need companions in order for the horse to utilize, to absorb, to metabolize other nutrients? And if they do, then what proportion and ratio should they be in? And once again, Dr. Gravely, through his extensive research, made those determinations. He was able to, to, to determine what nutrients needed companions and what proportion and ratio to each other without causing an upset or an, uh, an uh, unbalance as far as uh, the nutrition that the horse needs daily. And the product that he was able to put together was a product called Farius Formula. And it is specifically for dermal tissue growth. In other words, it's going to improve all this dermal tissue in, in the horse itself. We often refer to Farius Formula as being a hoof supplement, but it is for all dermal tissue. A uh, Farris formula has been around 35 plus years now. Uh, it's one, the only hoof supplement that has what I call a white paper to back up the effectiveness of the product itself. Uh, it's going to help uh, improve growth, the quality of that growth. And, and typically you're going to see some visual signs of the results of feeding the product anywhere from eight to 10 weeks. We should see some new hoof growth that's going to start at the coronary band itself. And from that point, it'll take us another seven, eight, nine months to complete that regrowth process. But it, as it does this internally, it's going to help thicken and strengthen the hoof wall improve the internal aspect of the foot itself and actually thicken the sole of the foot in this regrowth process. Along with the foot, it's going to improve skin quality, hair coat, hair condition as well uh, in, in the feeding process. This is an extreme example of a horse that was uh, out of the state of Florida. Very nasty situation here, but under the guidance of a good farrier and the addition of farrier's formula, over a period of about nine to 10 months, we were able to make this difference, this change in hoof quality. Another thing that a complete hoof supplement is going to do, such as Farrier's formula, it improves hair coat, hair condition. And as we take a look at the uh, top horse here, uh, we can see it likes the shine, it likes the luster, it likes the color in its mane. And after this horse has been on Farrier's formula, uh, very, in, in, fact, uh, in fact, as far as the hair coat, uh, a Ferris formula works much quicker than in trying to regrow the entire foot. But this is the, the results after this horse has been on Ferris formula for a short period of time. It just improves the shine, the quality of the hair coat, the skin conditions. It's going to improve uh, uh, the, the hair follicles that's going to grow the hair itself, the oil glands that gives the individual hair uh, a hair, shaft, a hair shaft, its coat, I mean its uh, shine uh, that we like to see in, in, the, in the hair coat of a horse. As we continue to talk about nutrition and as we continue to talk about some of the nutrients that a horse needs, some of the things uh, are going to be trace minerals. And I just wanted to point this out to you that some of the examples of trace minerals would be copper, zinc, and iodine. And these are needed by the horse on the daily basis, but the amount that a horse needs on the daily basis, meaning trace minerals, is that we're only talking about milligrams of product on the daily basis. We're talking about the 
the amount of a grain of salt or the weight of a human eyelash. And then the other group of minerals are, are referred to as macro minerals. Uh, the horse is going to require a little bit more on a daily basis. In fact, we're talking about gram amounts. Uh, some examples uh, would be calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. Uh, as an example of a gram weight, we're talking about the weight of a dollar bill, a small paper clip, and so forth. My point is here, a lot of times if we feel like a horse needs a little, then if we give a whole lot, then that's going to be better for the horse. And that is not the case when it comes to nutrition at all, especially when it comes to mineral, vitamins, uh, and even amino acids. One thing that's going to cause an upset uh, as far as dermal tissue and especially the foot of the horse and especially if we have a horse that has a foot issue to begin with, is that we need to stay away from bran. And I know that a lot of folks like to add bran to the diet of the horse, but if we have a horse that's struggling with hoof quality, I would certainly stay away from bran. And the problem is that bran is extremely high in phytates, which is extremely high in phosphorus, and, and what it does simply is it gets our calcium phosphorus ratio out of balance. And this excess phosphorus, uh, what it does is it ties up the needed calcium that the horse needs on a daily basis. And this is an example of a foot. Uh, and this horse was on excessive brand. And we can see the collapsed heels here. We can see the crumbling hoof horn as well. Uh, and, and essentially what has happened is that we, the horse has lost the needed calcium. And, and basically, simply, calcium is the glue that holds that foot together. We, we lose the attachment uh, uh, simply from the lack of calcium in the diet of the horse. When we talk about calcium phosphorus ratio, we know that high phosphorus in the diet will tie up the calcium. Uh, we also know that high calcium has no effect on phosphorus absorption. However, calcium, high calcium will affect the horse and that it will interfere with the absorption of magnesium. So we need to be careful about excessive calcium as well. And typically what we're shooting for in just a typical horse as far as a calcium phosphorus ratio is basically a one to one. Now there are exceptions to that rule, yes. And if we're talking about a pregnant mare or a growing foal, then we're going to add a little more calcium versus phosphorus to the diet of those particular animals there. Of course, magnesium, you can see what it does to the horse, the nervous system, metabolism, uh, energy regulation. Selenium is one of our trace minerals that the horse needs daily. Uh, the problem with selenium is over supplementation. Of course, selenium is needed for normal muscle development. Uh, we, there is no evidence or research that selenium deficiency affects the hoof structure. I'm talking about a deficiency. Now, when we have the excess, that's a different uh, story in itself. Uh, in fact, a selenium toxicity problem more often is going to uh, take place in, the, in an area of the U.S. where we actually have uh, selenium deficiency in the soil. We actually supplement with selenium and then it's very easy to overdo what the horse needs on a daily basis. Uh, we'll receive selenium from the hay that may be brought in from a different area. Uh, the feed that we're feeding the horse often has selenium. If the horse is being given different supplements, a lot of times those supplements will have selenium in them as well. And it's very easy to cross the line and create a selenium toxicity problem. Uh, and this is a foot that is being affected by too much selenium in the diet of the horse here. 
and you can see the ridges here. Uh, we can tell that this hoof capsule has been severely compromised. We have a crusty coronary band. Uh, and since we're lacking quality here in as far as the hoof wall itself, then the, uh, this particular foot is very susceptible to uh, a bacterial or a fungal invasion. Of course, uh, some of the clinical, clinical signs that you're able to see here as well. Uh, it's also going to affect the hair coat of the horse, where we actually have hair loss, particularly mane, tail, and you see some of the other uh, problems that we can end up with as far as a selenium toxicity problem. The most accurate test for selenium is from red blood cells. Be cautious of uh, chelated selenium supplements. In fact, what that does is that actually forces the horse to absorb those uh, through the intestinal tract. Vitamin A as an example and how it affects dermal tissue. Uh, vitamin A is a strange creature in that if we have a deficiency or if we have an excess, then we end up with the same clinical signs. More often, we're going to have a excess or a toxicity problem because vitamin A is pre prevalent. Well, it's actually not vitamin A, it's, it's, it's keratin that's gonna come from whatever forage the horse is able to consume and the horse is able to convert that to needed vitamin A a lot of times our hay is going to contain uh, vitamin A as well, or the keratin that's converted over to vitamin A. And a lot of the feed that we feed our horses is uh, vitamin A is added to that. So a deficiency is very hard to come about. And so what we see more often than anything else is from an excess. And let me back up. And, and as we take a look at the foot of this horse from too much vitamin A, we have an extremely thin hoof wall here that wants to break up, it wants to crack, and it looks like we have hair-like projections that are protruding from the end of the toe itself. Another mineral that we'll spend just a minute on is sulfur, <clears throat> and sulfur is needed by the horse. It's needed by dermal tissue itself, and especially the foot of the horse. Uh, a lot of our hoof supplements, and especially Farrier's formula, will contain methionine, which is an amino acid, and methionine contains organic sulfur. And the problem that we can create is if we're feeding as a hoof supplement with an individual joint supplement that contains MSM, which is another form of sulfur, a lot of times when we put the two together, then we end up with too much sulfur in the diet of the horse itself. And so to help alleviate that problem, Life Data Labs has created a combo product there which has various formula in it, and it has a joint supplement in it as well. And it will have the right balance as far as sulfur in the horse, uh, is sulfur in the product that the horse needs as well. It also has some glucosamine, ornithine, proline in it as well, and manganese as far as the joint side. So we have our hoof protection and joint protection as well. Methionine is an essential amino acid that's going to be found in Farrier's formula as well. And if we have excessive amounts of methionine in the diet of the horse, then this will actually cause an imbalance uh, and create a problem as far as dermal tissue that's going to specifically affect the foot of the horse. And what we end up, we end up with a situation that's going to actually mimic white line disease. In fact, we'll actually end up with wall separation there. 
but the thing about the wall separation if we could do put some clippings underneath an electron microscope we're not going to find any microorganisms that's going to be typical of a true white line problem there so this excess methionine causes a depletion of iron copper and zinc another mineral uh, especially if we have a deficiency in the diet of the horse uh, this is a strange cr creature as well in, in that it leads to rapid hoof growth uh, this hoof growth is very poor in quality uh, we actually have enough hoof growth where we actually need to trim the foot at least every 10 to 14 days and this zinc deficiency actually makes the horse more prone or more susceptible to canker. Uh, another vitamin that we will mention right quick is bitin. Uh, it is simply a B vitamin. Uh, in fact, I'd say back in the mid 80s, uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, publications, uh, a lot of writings that bitin was the solution, it was the answer to a dermal tissue problem, especially a, a hoof problem. Uh, but as we can see here, uh, number one, uh, a bitin deficiency in, in a horse is rare to begin with. In fact, uh, uh, I would conclude that only maybe 5% of the horse population would actually have a bitin deficiency. Another thing that we need to point out as well is that this particular B vitamin can actually be produced naturally in the hind gut of the horse unless this horse is sick or under extreme stress uh, and it can produce this B vitamin naturally simply from, from the forage that it's consuming and that it's grazing. Uh, most hoof supplements along with various formula will contain about 20 milligrams of biotin. Uh, the research that has been done here by Dr. Gravely and at Life Data, Data Labs, uh, his conclusion is that uh, 20 milligrams is essential for those horses that are laminitic, uh, that have foundered in uh, the uh, extra uh, the extra milligrams of this is beneficial in the horse in that situation. Uh, when we talk about the environment, uh, this has a factor on dermal tissue as well. As our temperature goes down, as our daylight hours decrease, uh, then that horse is going to put on its winter coat. Uh, hoof growth is going to slow at that point in time. And then when spring finally gets here and we make it through the winter months, the reverse happens. Uh, that horse is going to shed that winter coat and put on this new slick, shiny new coat, uh, provided that it has had the right nutrients uh, for the skin, uh, for the hair follicles, for the oil glands to produce this hair follicle. And then our hoof growth is going to increase at that point in time as well. And as we see here, as daylight increases, so does hoof growth and shedding of this uh, winter coat. When we talk about environmental problems, uh, a couple of things will come into play. Excessive moisture, a lack of moisture. Wet, dry, wet, dry has a detrimental effect on the foot of the horse. What excess moisture is going to do, a lot of times it softens that hoof capsule. It allows that hoof wall to expand and we end up with some wall separation. Uh, that becomes uh, an entry point for bacteria and fungi. And if we're not careful, then we'll end up with some white line issues it also aids in uh, as far as thrush and a lot of our other bacterial and fungal issues that wants to work on the foot of the horse so too much moisture takes a toll on the foot of the horse uh, another thing that we will point out if we don't do a good job in cleaning our stalls and we have a pneumonia or 
build up, then that takes a toll. Uh, it will literally eat the bottom of a foot up over a period of time. A dry foot, uh, same thing here, that hoof council wants to contract, and as it contracts, it wants to crack, it wants to split, and this is just a typical dry foot here. And so what Life Data Labs has to offer is a product called Farious Finish. Uh, it's an antimicrobial. It's a disinfect that's going to help uh, fight off your excess bacteria and fungi that uh, wants to eat on and uh, do damage to uh, the foot of the horse. It's also a conditioner in that it has the ability to help maintain the proper moisture balance within the hoof capsule itself. It has the ability to either help shed the excess moisture or to retain the needed moisture depending on what the situation might be. It's a very mild, it's a very non-caustic product and a product that's going to go on the entire foot, the entire sole and the entire hoof wall. And then the other product that we have to offer that's specifically for a bacterial or a fungal issue or the prevention of it is our uh, Life Data Hoof Clay. Uh, it's a very easy product to use. It's a non-caustic product and it can be used uh, for specific hoof issues, whether that's a crack, a chip, an old nail hole, or whether that's for wall separation underneath the shoes great product for thrush and we can actually use the two products together we would use the clay first in our problem areas and then we would finish off the, the entire foot with the liquid product farious finish this is the million dollar question is your horse missing a piece of the puzzle of course, as we said earlier, there's not a whole lot we can do as far as genetics, but to get the best dermal tissue that we possibly can underneath uh, for our horse, and we have to work on nutrition, and we have to do what we can to help control those environmental factors that work on the foot and the rest of the horse as well. Uh, as we come to an end, we will just mention this right quick as far as mechanics and the work that your farrier would do. Uh, we know that proper blood circulation is important for hoof growth. We know that exercise is important for hoof growth as well. And another thing that's important for hoof growth, which was pointed out by Steve Krause, uh, and Steve is a resident farrier at Cornell University. Uh, Steve made this statement here, if your horse's feet are properly trimmed and or shod, the foot will land in a balanced way. This provides better circulation for the entire foot and encourages good hoof growth. A poor trim will hinder hoof growth. Very important that our farrier balances the foot like it needs to be so that it will land correctly. And then Ernest Woodward also makes this statement here that routine and frequent trimmings and shoeings on a regular schedule creates a uniform shoeing cycle with no extreme. So we need to keep our horses on a regular schedule so we don't end up with that excessive hoof growth. And Dr. Gravely, the founder of Life Data Labs and also Farious Formula, uh, he made this statement, you can't have a healthy foot without a good farrier, and a good farrier can't do a good job without a healthy hoof. In summary, good dermal tissue requires, number one, a good farrier. We got to do a good job in controlling our environmental problems, a balanced diet through good nutrition, uh, good health care, and if we could genetically select our horses for good dermal tissue, that's an added advantage as well. And if anybody would have any questions at this time, I would be delighted to try to answer those. Okay, again, um, on the right hand side, uh, of your computer, you should see a drop down menu where you can enter in your questions. Uh, so we've got a few here already. 
Let's see this first one, Mike. I'm going to summarize this one a little bit. Um, looks like the horse is uh, is thin, and uh, my but my horse is thin, really thin, uh, walled and pigeon toed. It's extremely hard keeping a shoe on him year round, and he's really easy to hot nail coming out of winter. Is there something you can recommend to help with thicker growth to allow my farrier something to work with? Um, it looks like earlier she does say that uh, the horse currently is on farrier's formula double strength. Uh, I would continue feeding uh, double strength farrier's formula. Now it will take some time for farrier's formula to completely regrow the foot. But as it regrows the foot, it's going to actually thicken and strengthen the hoof wall. And, and a good, thick, strong hoof wall uh, gives the farrier something to work with and something to nail the shoe to. And hopefully at that point, uh, you'll maintain that shoe retention between resets. If, if that horse is extremely thin, let's take a look at some additional nutrition maybe some additional calories. Let's make sure that that horse is receiving a balanced diet, number one, and let's make sure that we're not over supplementing that horse if we're, if we're feeding other supplements besides various formulas as well. Okay. Um, next one, uh, I have an older horse diagnosed with Cushing's disease and has a woolly coat. That is typical of Cushing's disease in itself. In fact, a lot of those horses want to maintain that long woolly coat way into the summer months. Uh, and some of them may not fully shed that coat at that point in time. Uh, if you're in an extremely warm area, uh, you might want to take it take a look at clipping the coat itself. Of course, I would consult with a veterinarian on your situation as well. There are certain drugs that you can actually give to the horse as well, but I would get up with your vet and let him make those particular recommendations. Okay, uh, next question, uh, hoof's not growing. What, what do you recommend? Well, there's many reasons why a horse would uh, not grow a foot. It could be from nutrition. Uh, it could be that the environment is taking such a toll on the foot of the horse uh, that the foot may actually be growing, but bacteria could be actually uh, eating the new growth up quicker uh, than what you may be seeing there. So there's a, there's a multitude of reasons why, you know, we don't see hoof growth. Uh, how much uh, ferrous formula should be fed daily? Uh, double strength ferrous formula, you would feed a half a cup or three ounces per day. And an 11 pound bag would last a, a, a thousand pound horse for 60 days then. If you're feeding the original formula, the white bag or the white bucket, you're looking at a full cup or six ounces per day. And that white bag is only going to last one month. Uh, there, uh, and the only difference between the original and the double strength is the amount that you feed per day. Uh, the double strength is also going to be a little more economical on a cost basis as well versus the original formulation. Uh, which mineral toxicity mimics the white line? Uh, methionine is an amino acid that will mimic white line disease and we simply, if you get too much methionine in the diet, it will mimic white line disease. Okay. Uh, if we feed free choice salt and minerals, is Ferris formula not recommended due to potential excess? Do we have to choose one or the other? What we recommend is simply white, just plain white salt. Uh, without the mineral in it. Uh, if you're feeding a salt that has uh, trace minerals added to it, uh, and if that horse is sweating quite a bit, and of course, as a, the more a horse sweat, the more salt that horse needs, we're actually forcing that horse to consume these trace minerals, which that horse may not need. So our recommendation here is just plain white salt, free choice for your horse. Okay. 
And then if you were interested in having your horse's blood tested, where would you go to do that? Uh, just please give us a call here. In fact, Dr. Scott Gravely would be glad to talk with you uh, concerning our blood uh, testing program here. Uh, we would love to hear from you on that. Um, okay, we're fixing to close up. So again, if you have any last minute questions, uh, please submit them uh, now. Um, and then I'll just tackle just a few more of these before we end this. Um, okay, uh, my horse's coat is great but his feet are terrible. What factor should I look into first? I'd, I'd look into number one, to make sure that the horse doesn't have a thyroid problem. Uh, that will cause some slow hoof growth itself. Uh, even And even though we may have a good uh, hair coat and luster to the coat itself. Uh, number two, the environment is going to take a toll on the foot of the horse and cause extensive problems to the foot, and we still will have a good hair coat. Uh, this is a good question here. Uh, my feed boasts the same supplements. If I use your product, how do I know I'm not giving too much? The question again. Okay, my feed boasts the same supplements. If I use your product, how do I know I'm not giving too much? So the feed has the same nutrients, I guess they're saying. Uh, of course, Farris formula is specifically a supplement for dermal tissue itself. If you are feeding a complete feed that has some of the same analysis, uh, the, the best bet on whether or not you're going to over supplement the horse is for you to get up with us uh, let us know what you're feeding specifically, and we can, at that point, make that determination for you. Without me knowing specifically what you're feeding and on all this, it would be hard for me to say. Uh, and this isn't a question, but it looks like a little bit of a testimonial. Um, it says, I have an Anglo Arab that foundered several years ago that I thought I would have to put down. Thankfully, between my farrier and farrier's formula, double strength and proper nutrition, she has responded beautifully. Thank you, farrier's formula. And thank you, Nancy. That's great. Thank you very much, Nancy. Okay, uh, that's going to uh, put an end uh, to today's webinar. I want to thank everybody again for attending. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to call us at 1-800-624-1873. Um, you can also visit us at lifedatalabs.com. We've got some more uh, testimonials. Uh, we've got some more uh, information regarding proper nutrition and supplementation. Um, if you have any questions about any of the products you saw today, again, you can call us or, or visit our website. Um, and then, again, we're going to plan on continuing uh, these webinars. Uh, so follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, we'll make sure to announce uh, more webinars as, as they come up. Um, thank you guys very much and have a great day.